Me and Santa's little helper here are going to show you how to make this cute little felt Santa bag uh, for Christmas time. Really, really simple. There's no sewing machine involved. It's all hand stitching. And this, I think, is a perfect little place to put presents for your pooch. Like I've got uh, two pieces of square felt. Um, this is quite a thick synthetic felt, not the, uh, the natural wool felt because it tends to be a little bit stiffer so for a bag it holds its shape better. These measure six inches across and five inches deep but you can make them square and you can make them as large or as small as you actually like. So that's the front and the back. And the handles I've cut to half an inch wide and those are nine inches long and again if you wanted to make those shorter or longer then of course you can do. I need one piece for the bottom, so my bottom piece is six inches across by two inches wide and two pieces for the side. So those are five inches long, so they're the same depth as the bag and again by two inches wide, so they're going to join together like that. But first of all I'm going to decorate. So I've got a half inch wide piece of black felt for Santa's belt and then a piece of orange felt which is going to be for his buckle and then I'll just need to cut a couple of round circles for the buttons. Now I'm not worried about these being absolutely perfect so I'm just cutting a, a kind of a circle but if you wanted to use a little template or buttons actually would be good then of course you can do. And I'm going to put one on the top and one on the bottom. And then I'm going to hand sew this all together using a blanket stitch. So for the buckle, I'm going to fold this in half and just put a couple of little snips in here, like so. And that's where I'm going to thread my belt through. So the snips should be the same width as the belt and that's an inch long. And that goes on there making sure the buckle sits in the centre and I'm just going to use a little squirt of repositionable adhesive to hold that in place while I sew it and that sits across the middle then I can still move the, the felt around if I need to and then with the buttons I'm going to sew those on uh, by hand and I'm actually using a crochet thread. You could use an embroidery thread but with the crochet thread you don't have to split it uh, and I find it easier to work with and it gives you a nice dense solid line. So I just tie a knot in the back of this. And we'll start to sew. Now I'm going to sew from the back of the button first of all so I don't see the knot on the inside of the bag. I will see some stitches on the inside. And then put that in position. And so. And I'm just going to sew a little cross in the centre. So, and then to finish off and keep this nice and neat, I'm going to bring the needle up behind the button. And do, do it this way as well if you're sewing a button on, if you don't want to see knots on the inside. It's only a gift bag at the end of the day, so it doesn't really matter. And just tie a knot underneath there. Now these aren't going to go in the wash, so if you can't be bothered to sew, there's no reason why you couldn't uh, glue these on. And if you're going to put buttons on instead of felt, I put a little bit of thread through the holes in the buttons first of all, uh, and then glue them on, and then it actually looks as though you've sewn the buttons on, so it's a bit of a cheat's way. So again, through the back, underneath. Make my cross shape. And 
I quite like that things aren't absolutely perfect. I would like that circle to be a little bit rounder, however, so I'll just trim that back a little bit. But I don't mind the stitching not being a perfect cross. I like things to look homemade if they are homemade. So again, just bringing the needle out underneath the button and finishing the knot off out of sight. Now for the belt, I don't need to sew the, uh, the buckle in place. I'm just going to put a running stitch just down the side of the black belt. Now again you could glue this if you wanted to. I don't mind seeing the knot on the inside here because that will disappear inside the side seam. So just stab your needle in and out in a straight line. And I'm just going to carry on all the way down the black side on both edges like that. So that's uh, my decorations finished. You could do the front and the back and take the belt all the way around the sides if you wanted to. But I'm just going to leave it as it is there. And then I'll need to take the side sections and the bottom and start sewing those together. And I'm going to use a blanket stitch so you can see the stitches. And it adds to that um, homemade kind of look. So line up the two edges together. I'm going to start with my needle inside the two sections so that you don't see the knot on the back. And I'm starting about a quarter of an inch in um, because I do need to allow for a bottom seam as well and my stitches are going to be about a quarter of an inch long. So wrap your thread over the top, put the next stitch in around about a quarter of an inch away and pull through. And there's your blanket stitch at the top. This side of the blanket stitch I'll catch when I come around to the other side. So again, about a quarter of an inch straight through. And the top of the blanket stitch should actually sit along the edge of the threads. Just wanted to show you um, a couple of things as I'm putting the whole bag together. Uh, first of all, how I'd start off my blanket stitch just to try and make it look neat um, at the top. Um, so I start again my quarter of an inch from the edge. Then I'm going to take one stitch all the way over and back through itself. This also makes the stitch a little bit stronger because this is the weak point of the bag right at the top. And then I want to start the blanket stitch actually along the edge here. So I'm going to loop my thread underneath itself at the top and then start with a blanket stitch. And that gives me that nice square initial stitch instead of having the first stitch going diagonally across to where we start sewing. So if I just do a few stitches, I'll show you then how I would um, join the stitches together if I run out of thread halfway along. So again, you just keep, I'm looping that fabric behind my finger, I find that easier. And then let go as I pull the, the stitch up. So if I'm running short on thread now, I take my thread over the side and into the wrong side of my fabric. I'll just pull that down. Don't pull the stitches too tight and then I'll knot this off on the inside. So we're looking like this. And then for my second stitch, I'm going to actually come in right at the point where those two stitches meet at the top and come through the middle of the thread. And then I'll carry on sewing. So it gives you an almost seamless stitch line, so you wouldn't know that I'd actually stopped and started stitching again there. Now when I come to the end of my sewing, I would go over the top, straight through that stitch again, and then take the stitch down to the inside and fasten off on the inside of my, um, on the inside of my work. Okay, so I've stitched all the way around all of the sides, so that's how we're looking at the moment. The last thing I need to do is to just pop the little handles on. 
So I would put a tiny spot of glue just behind the handles, just to keep them nice and strong. Sorry Alfie, did I wake you up? So I'll pop those on there. Try to make sure they're even on both sides. And then I'm going to put another cross stitch just in the centre of here, just to hold those. We're all finished and ready for Christmas. Just like Alfie.